poor chefs are hoping to earn big dividends in the market. The supermarket, that is. Let's meet them. First up, Tony Nacello, chef and owner of an Italian restaurant and father of one from Fargo, North Dakota. Next up, we have Allison Settle, a line cook at a popular gastro pub in Louisville, Kentucky. Then there's Danielle McKay, a private chef and caterer from Los Angeles, California. To wrap it all up, Eric Renner, an executive chef and restaurant consultant from St. Louis, Missouri. All right, chefs, we're gonna start out with something that everybody loves, French toast. It's a breakfast classic, and it's just totally ripe for a creative makeover. And in three, two, one, go! First thing I need for French toast, bread. First thing I'm doing is running towards the bread aisle. You're looking for softness of the bread. Oh. There's no bread to use. Attention shoppers, we seem to have a little difficulty. We like to call this game Aisle Down. Good luck on finding your bread needs throughout the rest of our fantastic store in Flavortown Market. What am I gonna do now? Keep shopping! <laughs> Let's see. Oh, seriously, because that's like the first thing you try to make the decision on is what bread you're gonna use. Bread. So I'm making a French toast with some kid-friendly flavors. I know, Andy. If I grab hazelnut chocolate, some berries, vanilla. Awesome! All these key flavors to making French toast. So I'm making a French toast with a maple syrup infused with orange zest and mint. I want to keep it classic, but still add a little bit of Danielle zhuzh to it. I choose naan. It's a thinner bread. I don't have to cut it down. And I look up and see lemon curd. I'm going to make naan French toast with a lemon curd honey yogurt filling. I'm cooking a fig and pig dish with French toast. I grab this fig compote. I love just playing with things that are sweet and savory. I always cook French toast for my son Giovanni. French toast should be fun. So I'm making kids French toast. All right. So I got to defrost the bread, so I put the little baguettes in the microwave. Oh, yeah. My bread burned in the cast iron chili because it was way too hot. I just thought, OK, I've got plenty of bread here. Do it again. The Hawaiian rolls were little bitty nuggets. They didn't really need too much time to cook. I'm just obsessed with all different kinds of sauces. Good sauce can really bring a plate that might be kind of disjointed together. Lemon curd is super sour and somehow sweet at the same time, and it can blow your palate. Five minutes, five minutes left. I have this huge piece of pork belly. Cut it into big, broad triangles. I get that into the fryer. I'm gonna pair that with uh, a nice sweet fig compote. I love just playing with things that are sweet and savory. This dish is something that I did at my restaurant, Moxie. I hope the judges love it. I think the plate looks clean, and I'm feeling pretty good about the dish. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop working! Great. Chef Eric, what are the judges to enjoy? You're gonna be having my uh, fig and pig French toast. For the bread, I used a frozen English muffin. Next up, Chef Danielle, what do you have for the judges? I have French toast. I used uh, Hawaiian rolls, mint, and a little bit of orange infused in the syrup. Chef Allison, what do the judges have here? I chose naan for my bread. I used a lemon curd, honey yogurt, granola filling. Chef Tony, please tell the judges what they're about to enjoy. So this dish is a classic French toast with some kid-friendly flavors like hazelnut chocolate, marshmallows, and fresh fruit. The chef that will be going home will be Chef Allison. <laughs> wow. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Can Can. Everything has to come out of a can, and you can use any can that you find in the store. Steak in a can? This is over-the-top pazzo. In three, two, one, go! Oh, lots of meat here. So I find corned beef hash, and then I find a can of stewed beef with its own gravy. So I'm making a meat Neapolitan. How about some uh, crab? Here we go, perfect. A little surf and turf. I would never eat like canned meats. How am I gonna do a whole steak dinner out of canned goods. 
First, I need to find a protein that is going to work and hold up and not be too mushy. I'm going to make this roast beef with mushrooms and sweet potatoes. So I'm making a Tusk can beef ragu out of all canned food. And this is going to take me back to when I was a young chef starting out at 14 years old in an Italian restaurant. I love sweet potatoes. I'm hoping that the sweetness from the sweet potatoes will naturally balance out some of the salt from the canned meat. That's not going to work. I take the corned beef off the grill because I couldn't get the grill marks that I was looking for. This mushy meat. So I put it on a sheet pan, put it in the oven. Okay, asparagus. With the asparagus in a can, it's very soft and mushy. Vinegar. The best way to deliver that on the plate was to puree it. Canned food is very salty. So I'm hoping the starch and the vegetable will help with the saltiness of the canned beef. I'm gonna do a little white bean puree. I'm gonna add a little bit of canned milk to just cut a lot of the sodium and to give it a little bit of creaminess. 30 seconds! Oh, so I'm stacking my Neapolitan with the corned beef, with the regular beef, and another piece of corned beef. Nine! My dish actually has some balance. It has nice color. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop working! First up is Danielle. This is roast beef and potatoes. Chef Eric, please. So I've named this my Tuscan beef ragu with the cannellini beans and the canned asparagus. Up next will be Chef Tony. When I think about steak, you have to have a good spud. So I found canned potatoes and I did beef. The one that will be leaving us will be Chef Tony. I want you to make a soup and sandwich combo. This next game is called No Carts Allowed. It's only what you can carry in your hand and your arms, OK? And here we go. In three, in two, one, go! I'll take these. I want to make a chicken sandwich because I can kill a chicken sandwich. I grab box soup with cashew, ginger, and carrots. When I hear it's only what you can carry in your hands, I wanted to keep it classic. I'm going to do my famous moxie tomato bisque and grilled cheese. The fact that it's down to me and Eric, $20,000 is so close I can taste it. I would definitely invest it into my business. I add my heavy cream to the soup to round everything out, and then I just keep tasting and tasting. It's right when the garlic and the basil kind of just pop in your mouth, and you get that nice tomato. Five, four, three, two, one, stop working. Nice job, you guys. Nice. First up will be Chef Eric. Please tell the judges what they have. You're going to be tasting tomato bisque and grilled cheese. Chef Danielle, what do you have for us? The soup is a cashew carrot ginger soup, and the sandwich is a crusty bread with chicken and Munster cheese. The chef that will be leaving us is Danielle. I have a list here of 10 items here in the store. For each item that you put in your cart, you get 2,000 bucks. Grab all 10 items before the two minutes is up, and you will win $20,000. Three, two, one, go! Right. He's off! You're all right. There we go, candy with red. Great start, $2,000. So after I grab my red candy, I hit a strategy of going to the perimeter first and looping my way back, hoping I'll have time to go into the aisles afterwards. Six pack. $4,000. Whoa, sparkling wine. OK, sparkling wine. $6,000. This is more than money. It's a second chance. 10, 9, 8, 7. Mint chip ice cream, we got it. Kidney beans is our last thing. Three, two, one. I just won $18,000 on Triple G, and it feels fantastic. This money is going to get my head above water, and uh, man, once I get my head above water, look out, because I'm going to be tearing it up. Ladies and gentlemen, round it out at a clean 18 grand. Give it up, man! 